3. Will the Christchurch mosque attacks go down as our greatest intelligence failure? He doesn't want people to wear masks. Now Donald Trump's lawyer has coronavirus. And hope has arrived in COVID-stricken Britain in the form of millions of doses of vaccines. Kia ora, good evening. Tomorrow could reveal New Zealand's biggest ever intelligence failure, according to a leading international law expert. That's when the findings of the Royal Commission into the Christchurch mosque attacks are released to the public. But victims and survivors of the shootings have already digested the 800-page report and they want meaningful action. Juliet Speedy reports. We won't know the findings of this 800-page Royal Commission report until tomorrow, but Farid Ahmed does already. It is uh, really hard to digest emotionally. You know, it will take time. He survived the March 15th massacre but lost his wife, Husna, and is now an international face Thank of peace and much, unity. Everybody. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Fareed says the report puts the ball in the government's court to act on its findings and make the country safer than it is now. How much and how quick a government can do things. So lots of expectations from people on government. An international law professor thinks the changes recommended in the report will be widespread and significant. You may see changes in legislation with regards to the security services, possibly with regards to firearms control and maybe also with the police. He says it could show New Zealand's biggest intelligence failure ever and heads may roll. If there were intentional oversights, if there were reckless oversights or they were negligent in their duties, then you may expect to see some people have calls for their resignation. The Prime Minister is promising accountability and action, but won't confirm yet whether they'll offer an apology for failures that led to the murder of 51 people. The recommendations span across a number of areas. They don't just relate, for instance, to our security and intelligence agencies. Uh, and so it will take some time for us to be able to implement some of the findings. However, some we will be able to move on quite quickly. Fareed Ahmed hopes New Zealand will be a safer and better country as a result. I am very hopeful that future is going to be safer for all New Zealand kids, all New Zealanders. Tomorrow we'll find out the first steps toward that. Julia Speedy, News Hub. Police arrested a man today over a shooting incident inside an Auckland strip club. Shots were fired and a brawl reportedly broke out at Calendar Girls on Karangahapi Road in the early hours of Sunday, November 22nd. A 48-year-old man has been charged with doing a dangerous act with intent, two firearms charges and cannabis possession. And the gunman behind a shooting at a popular Auckland viaduct bar continues to evade police tonight. Party goers and staff ran for cover when shots were fired outside Dr Rudy's rooftop bar early on Sunday morning. The police association says unfortunately the incident is no longer surprising to officers. Four years about the increased risk of criminals with firearms. It starts with them arming themselves, then they start shooting each other, then police get shot at. And the final step is when the public get caught in the middle. And that's what we saw on Saturday night, unfortunately. Police have confirmed a handgun was used to fire multiple shots into the foyer ceiling. A central Auckland property has been searched, but no arrests have been made. Donald Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, is in hospital tonight, admitted with coronavirus only hours after a TV appearance. He's been travelling around the US, spearheading the president's campaign to try to overturn the election and greeting crowds without a mask. Here's David Wywood from 7 News. Fighting for the president on morning TV. Well, I think Georgia, we're probably the furthest along. Before Rudy Giuliani's own battle was revealed hours later, Donald Trump telling the world his lawyer had tested positive for the China virus. Get better soon, Rudy. We will carry on. Infected after weeks crisscrossing America as the public face of Team Trump's legal challenges. The Trump campaign insisting Giuliani returned negative tests before 
before this trip to Georgia last Wednesday and before he appeared maskless in Michigan, urging others to do the same. Would you be comfortable taking your mask off? Now at Georgetown University Medical Centre, his son says the 76-year-old is resting, getting great care and feeling well, a high-profile statistic in a national crisis that's claimed almost 300,000 American lives. We have a vaccine. There is light at the end of the tunnel. From tonight, the country's most populous state, California, will significantly ratchet up its lockdown measures. As of midnight here, 33 million Americans will be placed under strict new stay-at-home orders. The drastic action taken to avoid hospitals becoming dangerously overloaded before Christmas. As experts battle the virus and community resistance. I hear community members parrying back that masks don't work. Our job is to constantly say those are myths. The Human Rights Commission is launching an inquiry into the Pacific pay gap following a report which details serious inequities and discrimination. The report found Pacific women earn 27% less on average than Pākehā men. The Commissioner for Equal Employment Opportunities says immediate action is required. If we continue to tolerate this inequity, this wage discrimination, then we violate our own laws for ourselves and we also violate the international conventions on human rights that we have ratified. The report found at the current rate of progress it would take 120 years to close the pay gap. The Prime Minister has called on the organisers of a $100,000 cash drop to apologise after fake money was given away. And the PR stunt by the safety warehouse has also caught the eye of police. Edward O'Driscoll has more. John Murphy spent 10 hours on a bus from Levin to Auckland hoping for a Christmas miracle. This was something that was certainly going to be a probably a once-in-a-lifetime event. But the stunt promising a $100,000 cash grab was memorable for all the wrong reasons. Now it's turned into be the disaster of my trip and the disaster I want to forget. That cash was nowhere to be seen in Auckland's Altair Square on Saturday. Participants instead turning on organisers after realising they'd been given discount vouchers made to look like $5 bills. It was like just heartbreaking to see that people were promised cash and now they're leaving empty handed. Police are now reviewing the event and talking to the company behind it, the safety warehouse. It's also prompted a warning from the Reserve Bank, who told News Hub today publishing anything that looks like a genuine banknote, or which could be mistaken for the real thing, may be against the law. It was very hard to tell the difference between genuine $5 notes and the fake ones. Jacinda Ardern is publicly calling for the company to say sorry. I, I cannot fathom how at any point someone would think that that was a good idea. Clearly it was not. Um, and it's caused harm, it's caused hurt. Um, they should apologise. Marketing expert Bodo Lang agrees. They can be authentic about it uh, and they can really try to compensate the people that kind of missed out on, but I think it'll be really hard. The safety warehouse has not responded to interview requests today. John Murphy wants them to at least try to make amends. There's no use for them. They're as good as Monopoly money. And he wishes he hadn't played. Edward O'Driscoll, News Hub. The Salvation Army is comparing the housing crisis to a perfect storm and says it will only get worse. The charity says historically low interest rates and a shortage of supply is driving up prices. Along with a stalled rental market and population increase due to COVID-19 border closures. The Salvation Army says the poorest 20% of our population are worst affected. Uh, there are people out there sleeping in cars, uh, there are people sleeping with, uh, living with families, uh, creating overcrowding um, happening, and obviously the transitional housing where, where people are living in motels. The organisation wants the government to act urgently on its proposals, which includes a wealth tax. A victim of historical abuse at the country's wealthiest school has detailed what he calls a culture of violence at Dilworth in the 1970s and the predatory nature of some staff. Neil Harding told the Royal Commission he was groomed there by a paedophile. Laura Tupai reports. At 11 years old, Neil Harding knew life at Dilworth would be tough. He was a placid child entering an all-boys Anglican boarding school. I tried to practice invisibility. I found being invisible 
made me less of a target. But he says sometimes he was caught off guard. And my time at Dilworth was really much a, a Lord of the Flies kind of environment where the, the big boys made up the rules and... Um, but the difference was, for me, was that we were being predated upon by staff. The late Reverend Peter Taylor pictured here with Neil Harding was one of those men. He was nicknamed Pumper Pig by the students, and one day Neil, who was now 12, found out why. I just sit down on the ground in the, in the corner of the room, cross-legged, and then he sat down cross-legged directly facing me, and I was, I was trapped. Then he proceeded to place his left hand on my right knee and started to move his hand up my thigh. So I grabbed his hand, pushed it away and leapt to my feet and got out of there. He never told anyone but later learned of another student's experience. He was allegedly sexually abused by Reverend Peter Taylor. I have been informed that he told the school at the time and was never believed. Neil Harding also says he was taken advantage of by another staff member. And said to me out of the blue, I want to cane you. I would have to do something wrong first, sir, wouldn't I? And he said, I'll be watching. He was later caned by that man. Neil Harding has tried for years to raise his concerns about the abuse he and others experienced at Dilworth. Finally, in 2018, he worked with the Trust Board to develop a child safety policy. I'm really confident that the Dilworth now is not the Dilworth that I experienced. And people are having to face questions in court over what happened historically. Seven men face sex and drugs charges in relation to alleged abuse at Dilworth from the 1970s to 2000s. But today, Neil Harding finally had his chance to be heard. To have a room full of people that are actively listening to what I have to say is, um, has been really validating. He's encouraging any other abused old boys who haven't come forward to do so. Laura Tupo, News Hub. Help is on the way for COVID-stricken Britain as millions of vaccine doses arrive. Plus, fire season has started across the Tasman and it's a popular tourist destination in flames. And it's goodbye to the black cap skipper, but only for a while and for a very happy reason. Tomorrow, the project is at seven. Then coronavirus brings tears, fears and anguish on the block Australia. And there's a new war for next door. Seth Rogen returns for Neighbours 2, Sorority Rising. It's all good on three. Heartland. Welcome to banking differently. That's what we've been doing for over 145 years. We're always evolving. Developing clever tools that make it easier for you. Whether it's growing your business, upgrading your vehicle or making the most of your retirement we're here to do the right thing for you Heartland No mai ki ngā kauinga kietanga o te mahi pēke Stationery has Christmas made for craft inspirations, gifts and decorations. Get this 12-pack of Tadeo multicoloured felt pens, only $1.99. Or these art activity tin sets, just $10 each. Only at Warehouse Stationery. Discover the many wonders of Aotearoa. See Milford Sound's untamed wilderness. Or catch the first light in Gisborne. With flights from $49 seat one way, explore Aotearoa, the eighth wonder of the world. Book now at Air New Zealand. Save Santa from disappointment. Get his favourite cookies in the whole wide world. Only one dollar at Subway. It's not okay to say she was asking for it. It's not okay to make them live in fear. Or think you can demand their love and respect. And it's not okay to look the other way and say it's not our problem. Because it is our problem. And it's not okay either. But it is okay to ask for help. Sometimes water alone just isn't good enough. This trial shows the result of a plant given water only and a plant given a combination of water and Yates Thrive Natural Fish and Seaweed Plus. Try Yates Plant Food and help nature thrive.
Lincoln? Helen? What a lovely coincidence. What are you specimens up to? Gentlemen? Perfect. Don't do that. I haven't seen you in a minute. How you been? We go from here to there. Mate, here. All right. Bye bye. Toodle pet. Yeah. We pick lush whole mangoes for a strip of real fruit, where it's paired with rich vanilla ice cream in each delicious Weiss bar. Real fruit, real flavour. Weiss ice cream. Make it your pick. Hairdressing is best left to someone with specialist expertise and experience. So is organising insurance for your business. Are you doing your own? should run just it's well i don't <laughs> well listen you don't want politicians you want regular people who have national profiles and you've complained enough get involved okay you can do it i'll vote for you i'll send you a check the first batches of the pfizer covid vaccine have arrived in the uk ahead of what's being dubbed v-day the start of the country's mass vaccination program It'll take months to complete and Britain knows the world is watching. Sarah Greenolch from 7 News has more. A delivery many feared could take a decade to turn up, but just months since development and days after it was approved, the first batches of the Pfizer COVID vaccine arrived at a South London hospital. Yeah, EJA 553. Unpacked and stored at South Pole temperatures. Obviously, I can't hold them in my hands because they are minus 70 degrees. But to know that they are here and we are amongst the first in the country to actually receive the vaccine and therefore the first in the world is just amazing. The immunisation program starts on Tuesday. Initially, the jab will be given in hospitals with some British GPs on standby to deliver it from next week. We are aiming for um, those aged over 80, uh, care home staff um, and then, of course, um, our health and social care family. This feels like the beginning of the end, but of course it's a marathon, not a sprint. No overnight fix. The lower the uptake, the longer restrictions will remain. Not that everyone's abiding by them. Over the weekend, some rebelled. A Christmas market had to be shut down 24 hours after opening, while this was the scene outside Harrods department store just days out of lockdown. Australia is tackling its first major bushfire of the summer at a tourist destination popular with Kiwis. A small town on Fraser Island in Queensland was evacuated overnight after a large blaze threatened homes. The fire has been burning for weeks and today help was sent from around Australia to help get it under control. Australia correspondent Emma Cropper reports. On remote and inaccessible terrain, flames burn through some of Australia's most protected bushland. The relentless Fraser Island Inferno has been unstoppable for weeks, but overnight the threat of the out-of-control fire put lives at risk. 11,000 residents inside the Happy Valley Township suddenly within its path. They are using everything that they've got uh, to contain this fire. From the year, the scale of the fire at the popular tourist destination is immense. In seven weeks, it's burnt through almost half of the island's heritage-listed bushland. This is a very serious situation on Fraser Island. You only have to look at the horrendous uh, temperatures that we're experiencing over there. Today, over 33 degrees, northwesterly winds with little chance of rain. Rain is the only thing that's going to put this fire out. Uh, so we'll continue our firefighting efforts for the coming days and perhaps even weeks ahead of us. Queensland has called for help across its border. New South Wales sent in its biggest water bomber this morning, with manpower expected to follow. We certainly stand ready to send firefighters or any other assistance that may, they may need to get on top of this fire. A seven-week firefight that's been called a marathon, not a sprint. But with each day the fire runs, another piece of this Australian paradise is being destroyed. Emma Cropper, News Hub. It's time now for a look at the day's sport. Amp up the fun with the new Suzuki Swift and News Hub Sport. 
The Black Caps are preparing for life without Kane Williamson. The skipper revealed late last week he and his wife Sarah are expecting their first child in mid to late December. And as Michael O'Keefe reports, that means the New Zealand skipper will likely miss some cricket this summer. If there was any example of just how important Kane Williamson is to the Black Caps, the first test in Hamilton was it. His career best 251 lay the platform for a commanding test win and kept them in the hunt to reach the test championship final later in the year. So news he might have to miss a game for the birth of his first child might be of concern to fans, but not the staff. I guess as a parent you only get that opportunity once in your life to, to, to be there for your child's birth and I know that's important to Kane and he'll want to be there as well. Williamson shared his good news on Friday. Yeah, very, uh, very exciting time. Uh, in anybody's life and, and certainly in mine. But the due date could clash with a game this summer. Mid to late December. Does a due date mean anything? I don't know. The Black Caps are set to play three T20s against Pakistan from the 18th to 22nd of December before two tests, one on Boxing Day and the other starting on the 3rd of January. Not to mention this Friday's test against the Windies. We'll just have contingencies in place that if, if something has to happen we, we can change quickly but everyone's aware of it in our environment and we'll, we'll make that call when we have to. Hamilton debutant Will Young will likely be Williamson's replacement at number three. He was named in our 13 originally and I mean, uh, we, don't, we don't select and, and, and non-select on one innings at a time. It's welcome news for Young who's likely to miss selection this Friday as BJ Watling returns to full fitness. The prospect of Williamson missing some matches, not that big of a deal. At the end of the day we play cricket and uh, other things are much more important and that's more important. It's already been a summer to remember, but it's set to become unforgettable for the Black Caps skipper. Michael O'Keefe, News Hub. Members of the Pakistan cricket team are set to leave managed isolation in Christchurch tomorrow ahead of their upcoming matches against the Black Caps. The squad has returned negative COVID-19 tests on day 12 and will be free to travel to Queenstown if cleared by health officials. The news is not so good for England's tour of South Africa, which is in serious doubt following another COVID scare. The second one day was scheduled for tonight, but it's now been postponed with two members of the English England touring party returning unofficial positive test results. Yesterday's opening ODI was abandoned 30 minutes before the scheduled start time after staff at the England Hotel contracted coronavirus. Another stellar performance from Spurs duo Harry Kane and Sun Hyung Min has helped the London club regain top spot in the English Premier League with a 2 0 win over Arsenal. Elsewhere, Liverpool cruised to a 4-0 home win over Wolves, while Crystal Palace and Leicester City also had wins. It was a fairy tale first career win for Sergio Perez, but heartbreak for another driver looking for their breakthrough moment at the Sakia Grand Prix. 22-year-old Brit George Russell, driving in place of COVID-stricken Lewis Hamilton, looked on track for a win on debut for Mercedes, but he dropped a fifth after a bizarre pit lane mix-up, which saw him released on the wrong tyres, and after fighting his way back to second, he suffered a puncture that put an end to his hopes of a podium finish. Like really. uh, Guys, I don't know what to say. That was taken away from us twice. Last place at the end of lap one. And Russell's misfortune meant Perez became the first Mexican to top the podium since 1970. Despite the win, he's still without a drive next season. Do stay with us. We've got the weather for your region after the break. And if you live in Wellington, you might want to work from home tomorrow. This thing is getting fairy. This is the day. We're watching Scott Morrison's address. That stunned Australia. Life is changing as we deal with the global coronavirus. And changed their block dream. You really need to be with your children. Forever sets off every emotion. You guys can't come in. I won't be staying. I'll walk home for after. Brought to you by Carpet Court. All new The Block Australia. Tomorrow, 7.30 on 3. Whether you do it yourself or do it together, do it all with the Bosch DIY 18 volt system with one power for all battery for the entire power tool and garden range. The hardest bit is deciding where to start. Get yours exclusively at Mitre 10.
dose of happy? Join Two Degrees on eligible pay monthly or business plans. And choose your free gift card or smartphone worth up to $249. In your face, 2020! Head online or see us in store today and we'll turn your frown upside down. Find everything your kids love at New Zealand's favourite toy store, The Warehouse. Like Disney Cars 3 characters for just $10 and get two more months of Disney Plus on us when you spend $100 or more in one transaction. Give more Christmas at The Warehouse. Introducing Slasher, organic technology that kills weeds. Slasher Weed Killer from OCP is glyphosate free and kills weeds fast. Slasher, a revolution in organic technology. It's that specials time of year again. Get Steinlager Classic Bottles, 24-pack, $36 a pack. And Stone Lee or Taylor's Promised Land, 750ml, $11 each. Plus, remember to collect free glass containers with one card. But only while stocks last at Countdown. What's happening now, Detective? They're still there. You would have thought they'd moved out by now. Got themselves a little unit somewhere. Ask about a reverse mortgage from Heartland and discover how you can enjoy a better retirement. Heartland Seniors Finance. If any year calls for comfort food, it's this one. Is that a bit? <laughs> so comfy. Introducing the new buttermilk fried chicken burger oh, from BK. Mm. Super crunchy. The chicken's so tender. It's so incredible. So good. 2020 needed this. I'm eating a burger in a bed with two dudes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This is my happy place. Fried chicken is just the best thing ever. Mm. Cozy. With tender buttermilk fried chicken breast, pickles, lettuce and creamy mayo. The ultimate comfort burger is here for you. Warehouse Stationery has Christmas made. Personalised presents for the whole brigade. Clever, thoughtful, romantic, well played. Stockings stuffed, secret Santas made merry. Christmas made easy at Warehouse Stationery. Let's take a look at what's happening with your weather tomorrow. The weather, bad for cats, great for making power. At Meridian, we only generate power from wind, water and sun. And western areas are in for more rain. It's also going to be windy with warm and humid northwesterlies. That's our show for tonight. Join the AM team tomorrow from 6am. We'll see you back here at 10.35. I'm Yannicka Turrell. Good night.
this mountain, it demands 